Okay, hi everyone. I'm Casey Christensen, located in uh, West Kelowna, BC. And today I thought we would play with the whole Hello Ladybug um, uh, bundle. It's not a bundle anymore. When I bought mine, it was a bundle, so you got that 10% off. They're now separate things, so you need to get the Hello Ladybug stamp set as well as the um, punch. You need to buy them separately, it looks like. I went through the catalog. I've got my white card base, and this is the uh, basic white thick. You always have to use the basic white thick um, card if you're doing a white card. You need to use the basic white thick for your card base, otherwise it's a little flimsy, okay? And then I've cut my two pieces. I want to go with the red and black theme, and I've cut my two pieces. But to be honest, I don't know whether it's going to be black on red or red on black. So I'm going to leave that for the moment. But what I want to work on is our card front. Now, I guess I have to sort of kind of make a little bit of a decision as to what size those are going to be so that I can make my card front. I think my first layer is going to be the red. And I think I'm going to make the first layer the same size as the card. Okay, so there won't be any white showing around. It'll strictly be the, the size of the card. And because I want to do that, I'm going to use my glue, not my um, not my tape gun, because with the glue I can get closer to the edges of the, uh, of the card stock, so it will glue down right to the edges. Oh, things are feeling a little thick in there. I must have something stuck in there, a little bit of something stuck in there. Oh, squeeze. I'm not strong enough. I think my glue bottle needs a little clean out at the nib too. That's not helping. So let's put this down right on the edge of the fold. The nice thing with glue is you have a little wiggle room, which I really appreciate because I find I need it. And then the black piece, the next piece down, I think I'm going to take off one notch of the ruler so one is on the 16th that would be a 16th i'm taking off gosh beats me one notch anyways off two sides and that's it for the black piece so just a little show around this black right not a lot a little bit of red there that again. There we go. That's what I'm aiming for. Just a little bit. Okay. Now we're going to get the silicone craft sheets because we don't want to get in. Oh no, we'll get one of these sheets because it's bigger. Let me just put this down so that I don't make a mess of things. And we're going to take our... This is basic. It doesn't have to be the thick for this portion. We only need the thick if we're working with the... Um, if we're working with the card base because it's just too flimsy otherwise. So let's do this. This was five and a half. Let's do this five, uh, five and a half. You know, I don't know what that measurement is. It's two notches below the five and a half, okay? For whatever reasons, the way things are going in my brain right now, I just can't commit to those little lines. And even if I relearn for the millionth time what those lines are, I still struggle to verbalize them. Okay? So there we go. So that's just a little bit smaller. Then, no, it's not a little bit smaller. So I guess I'm trim. Oh, you know what? I, I forgot that I'd already trimmed the inside one. So I'm going to trim it. I'm going to take another um, two notches off on two sides, okay? I measured it, 
I measured it against the, the full size card instead of against this black sheet, which is why it didn't come out the size, the size I did. All right, so that's better. That's kind of where I'm going with that. All right, so we're going to get out our stamp set. And I have chosen to use, we're going to make our own sort of background piece here. So I have chosen to use the, um, sorry, this. I'm using the pear pizzazz for my leaves. And I'm going to make a bunch of leaves on my sort of background, as it were, right? There we go. Get everything else out of the way. We're going to need a few bits and pieces of red and black in a bit. But for the moment, let's get it all out of the way. And I'm going to get my stamp pad here. And I'm just going to create a bit of a, a, a bit of a background. Now watch this stamp, have a look at it, and make sure it's getting well covered in ink, okay? You're also going to give it a really good press down. Make sure that you're pressing down in the middle of it. There we go. Pretty, huh? Now, the reason I'm not using the Stamparatus for this is because I would have to be constantly Stamparatus wash, Stamparatus wash, Stamparatus wash, wash, and it would just it would just take too long. So I'm just making sure that I do a good press, okay? Decide where you want these to be. They can overlap if you want to. Entirely up to you. Take another one and put it right about there. And we're just kind of looking to cover our, our white um, and give our ladybug somewhere to, to be. Now, I don't want too much white space, so I'm going to come in here. This is why I put down my sheet. Come in here and add a little bit uh, more leaf there. Okay. And I'm thinking of adding an upside down one right here. Because I like that idea. Obi-Wan, <laughs> your fearless leader. <laughs> and I'll just do a little bit here. How will I do it? Will I do a little? Yeah, I think I'll do like that. Right about like that. So that we give it very little white space left, okay? There. That's very pretty. like that. So that's our background piece. And you know what? I want to give it a tip of a leaf right there, just at the very bottom here. Just a tip. Yes. Okay. So there I have it. I'm happy with that. Just created our own DSP, right? I love being able to do that. There isn't, you know, sometimes there just isn't, I don't have any DSP that will go nicely with this Hello Ladybug, so it's nice that you can use your stamps and create your own. It's pretty. Okay, so now we're going to make um, a ladybug. And let's see how this looks. I want to audition this first, because you know me, if I... If I, if I have a look at it and I don't care for it, I'm going to start over. That's just the way I roll. So let's have a look at this one here and see what this is going to look like. What do you think? 
I rather like that. I think that looks kind of pretty. Okay, so that's our basic card, but we won't put it all together yet because we're going to make some make some things. Okay, get yourself out a piece of basic white. I don't know if this is thick or thin. It's just in my scrappy bits. So we're going to work with it. And I'm going to make myself... Now, I'm always torn here. Do I want to make myself... Uh, let, let's try this. I want to I want to use the punch. I've got my punch here. I want to do a black ladybug first. We'll see how we do with the stamping. You've got the option to stamp out your ladybugs or punch out your ladybugs. And so it, for me, it's a bit of a dilemma which, which way I want to do it. So I'm going to start by punching out a ladybug or two, maybe two ladybugs. Yeah, I think maybe two is a good idea. Most animals like to hang out in pairs, so let's give them, let's make them friends. And then I'm going to do some red wings. And maybe, okay, I have an idea. I love it when I think of things along the road. I don't always pre-plan things, but I, I like it when it comes to me while I'm while I'm doing things. That happens to me quite a lot. Okay, so let's give ourselves another set of wings. So there's two sets of wings. And I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna do should I have done that in the opposite way? I don't know now. I think I'm going to do um, embossing, heat embossing for the ladybug backs, for their wings. Yes, I think I will. Now I'm going to experiment here because I don't know in which order that ought to be stamped or done so let's just get my let's just get my uh, wings and we'll give them a good dunking of oh we need a little bit of embossing buddy remember we have to use the embossing buddy if we're going to emboss otherwise we get embossing powder where it does not belong but i thought to emboss these would make them jump out and look really cool it's the dots on the back right so you are going to see my hair. Sorry about that. There's not much I can do about that. Is that really what I want to do? Well, we're going to do one and see what it looks like. To be honest, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, I don't think that's going to work out. I think I have to do it. I think I have to do it and then cut them. So let's do that. <laughs> It's one of those days, people, we're learning together. We're learning this together. So let's do this. Let's get a, a fresh piece of red. We'll do this. And why not, to make sure we get lots of coverage, why not do it on the stamp rods? Then we'll make sure we're getting lots and lots of coverage of the, of the Versamark, because sometimes it takes more than one um, stamping to get it quite right. So we'll take this off and we'll put this on. So let's do this. Got my piece in there. Let's get my, I'm going to stamp that off. Get my ladybug wings. Let's do it this way and then I can just move the, I can just move it down one layer or one notch. Okay, so let's give that a good dousing, and we're going to do it twice. I think it would be a good idea to do it twice, just because Versamark is like that. It's just nice to do it twice. So let's peel it off. Yeah, I can totally see it. So let's give it another dose. It's much easier to do it this way, I think, because then um, there's something to hold on to to um, do the, the heat embossing, right? As we a paper to hold on to, and we can punch it after. All right, so let's take this off. We'll just move it on down and repeat that process. Give it 
two hits of Versamark. It might have been better if you had the reverse, but I don't have red. We don't we don't do red verse mark. But we're gonna play with this. We either love it and we use it, or we don't love it and we don't use it. It's that simple, people. That simple. That's what's in your order, the heat gun. Okay, so let's give this a little clean off. Quick like a bunny. Get that verse mark off of there. And I have no idea what we're going to get, but it might be really fun. So let's get our embossing stuff out. I've got my little tray. We don't sell these at Stampin' Up, but you can get them. It's kind of a handy way to keep track of your powder because otherwise it, it has a tendency to get everywhere, right? And we don't want that. I'm just going to pop that in there. Let's get this out of the way so we have room to... To play. Okay, so this is just black embossing powder. Uh, this happens to be Nuvo. I don't have any um, any Stampin' Up powders at the moment, although they are on my on my uh, list. I've kind of used them all up. They're very good. The Stampin' Up powders are very very good, but uh, this will do the trick today. Give it a little shake, shake, shake. Not much of a shake, shake, shake. It's going to end up all over your room like it does when I do it. I'm going to give it another little, another little pop. It's not like you're wasting it because you're going to, you're going to put it right back in the thing. So, but you want to make sure you have a really good coverage on there. That looks pretty good to me. Okay, so um, just have a look around and take off any little bit of excess because it will melt onto your paper. Mind you, we are we are punching these out, so it's not really going to matter that much. Okay, note to self, put your embossing powder back before you start your heat gun. Ask me how I know this. All right, see how easy that is? I got this one on on um, Amazon. This um, embossing tray, embossing tray, and it was it was pretty reasonable. Can't remember exactly, but I remember it being pretty reasonable. Okay, so let's get our gun out. It's going to be a little bit noisy for a second. All right. Just can't do this kind of thing quietly. So let me just let me just do this. Watching this happen is like a little miracle. how cool and shiny that got I don't know if you can see this but it's pretty cool it's very cool and shiny and it almost has a because it's thick it almost has a bit of a three-dimensional kind of thing and this is the very fine powder um, there's different there's different um, I don't know if you call it strengths but there's the different kinds of powders that you can get but I really like this one because it's just a nice uh, glossy kind of a finish so let's get our Let's get our, I always forget, try and remember to do this. I always forget to think about, think about how it's going to go into the um, punch when you're stamping it. So you don't get things so close together that you can't stamp them. 
I usually forget to think about that, but here we are. We've got my punch. There's one set of wings. Yeah, I haven't left myself room to hang on to, so let me just get a... Um, oh. There they are. I need a post-it note. So if you don't have room to hang on, just grab yourself a post-it note and stick it onto here. And then you can just use that like a handle to get it in there where you need it. Oh, I need to cut a little off. So I can just use that like a little handle. Post-it notes are the best thing to have in your craft room. Seriously, there's so many things that we do with them. Okay, so there we have our fancy our fancy ladybug wings. Let's see what they look like on our ladybugs. Okay. Oh, they do look very nice. They look super nice. Okay, so let's build our little ladybugs while we make the decision on to what else as to what else we want to do on there. And I am going to use dimensionals just because I think those wings would kind of come off the body of the little guy. So I'm going to use dimensionals here. Let me get rid of this board. I'll just put one on the back of each wing. Should do it. Two little ladybugs. And I'm going to want to have a sentiment. So I'm going to be careful where I lay my ladybugs because I, I kind of have a plan for a sentiment. I'm going to use the new um, dies that I just got. These great. I love these stylish shapes dies. These are pretty cool. It kind of covers a lot of bases. Okay. So we have the we have the the nesting circles. Okay. But as you can see, these circles are absolutely plain. It's just a plain cut line. And then this is sort of a scalloped outside too, okay? So, and then these ones are stitched on both sides. So these are more of a stitch set. This is more of a scalloped set. So I'm kind of thinking in my brain which way I want to go. I kind of like the look of these little tags, but that will depend on which sentiment I decide to use. So let's just have a look at our bugs first and get them ready and just see where we're going to place those on the card. I'm oh, embossing powder everywhere. So there's one little guy. Oh, they're awfully cute. They're awfully cute with their shiny backs. Let's do this guy. All right. So let's play with this. I've got to make a decision where I'm going to want um, my sentiment and what I'm going to want. So if I use this, I could use I could use this stamp that says "May your greatest wish come true." I think I could. We're going to try that. I'm not sure if that's going to work, but we're going to try it. And again, I think since we've already done it once. I think we owe it to ourselves to do it in um, in uh, memento and emboss the lettering, okay? Since we've already kind of established that theme. Oh, uh, they were on Amazon, Kim. Like everything else I buy, they were on Amazon. I think I better use the Stamparatus again for this. Just because sometimes lettering can be tricky. Well, that's not the stamp press. Couldn't have lost it already. Oh, there it is. Sometimes lettering can be a little bit tricky. So we have to keep in mind here. I'm going to want to cut it out with this. So let's, let's just see where we're going to want to put this stamp so that it's in the right place. So right about, right about there ought to do it. 
right about there, okay? Leaving us room to go back and use this. You could straighten it up a little bit too. There we go. So, there's my stamp. Now we need to use some embossing buddy, right? The embossing buddy is really important, otherwise you get little dots on your paper that you didn't intend on because if any little powders get on the paper, um, they won't come off once you've hit them with the heat gun. Okay, I think I'll do it again. I want it to be quite distinct and you can in the light, you know, if you're looking in the light, you can see how well saturated it is. But I always, I always tend to do, especially with wording, I always tend to do um, the Versamark twice, just because I want a really rich, clear, crisp um, set of words. And so it's a good idea to do that. All right, so let's get that off. Give it a little wipe down. Okay, put that aside. Now let's get our stuff back out here. And we need, just put the lid on that. And we need our black powder, which I put where exactly? I haven't left my seat, so it can't be very far. That's funny. Oh, here it is. May have not have left my seat, but I certainly turned in my seat. Okay. Yep, I'm going to do it again. I can just grab some of this. Oh yes, this is going to be great. That's a really good covering. Let's put that over there. There we go. You barely use any. I mean, I've had this, this one, uh, this one forever, and it just seems to go on and on and on and on. All right, let's cook this one. I'm actually really toying in my brain whether to do this in a, in a, in a tag like I was showing you or whether to do it in a circle. towards a circle but let's just see it's a possibility we got our card yeah this looks so great look at this shiny shiny I don't know if you can see that I can't really see it on my computer screen but it certainly is shiny right here all right, so let's go with that. Let's go with this. And we'll get out the little the little machine, the mini. Now, I don't have a magnetic for this yet, as you well know. They're not available quite yet. So I'm going to need to washi tape this down so that I get it nice and straight. Um, yeah, that looks really good. My only concern is if any of the wording gets cut off because it's a tight, tight fit. Can you see that? 
it's a pretty tight fit. I'm going with that and we'll see what that looks like. Worst comes to worst, we'll have to go back to the to the rectangles, okay? Or to the, the circles, I mean. So we'll see what this looks like first. And go from there. if I like that or not. I don't think I do. I think we're going to go with the circle. Yeah, I think we're going to go with the circle. So let's get out. Let's get out. Let's put this back. I think it just, it just feels too big. It just feels too big. And the wording in it just feels cramped. You see how it's some of the, some of the, the stitch lines are on the wording. So I'll put that in the Dexter dish for a future use perhaps, but I'm not going to use it for this one. So let's put that away. So we're not going to use those after all. But I like the idea of a circle, especially since I'd like to put some of this, um, this black gingham, gingham ribbon that I love. I want to put some of this on it because it's just beautiful with the, with the ladybug. All right, so let's revisit that. Where's my stamp? We'll, we'll still do a, an embossed stamp because I think that's the right thing to do. So let's do that again. And uh, I'm going to be a tiny bit wasteful right now, I think. And I'm going to put it over a little bit so that I, so I can decide what size circle that I want. The thing I like about this sentiment is because it says, may your greatest wish come true, it's a perfect birthday card without screaming birthday, right? Okay, so let's use a little bit of embossing buddy. And we'll burst and mark that up. Another good press, and we'll do it a second time. There we go. All right, we'll set that aside, and let's do this again. Let's do this again, and then we'll pick. That way we can do a red and black circle as well, because the, lay the layering circles are meant to do two circles of varying size, right? Yes, it is, Kim. And we don't sell it at Stampin' Up! anymore, which is a bit of a mystery to me. We sell the embossing powder and all the embossing tools, but for some reason we've stopped selling the embossing powder. However, it doesn't mean you can't get it, because you can. Just not at Stampin' Up! Get this one really nice and black. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm going to like this a lot on a circle. A white circle with a black one or a red one behind it. Not sure which one at this point, but... Yeah, I don't know exactly what's in there. I've heard people, you know, I've heard people talk about putting, you know, putting cornstarch in it, but I don't know. I wouldn't take the chance since I don't know what's in it. So let's just give this one a little heat. Yeah. 
we came home today so tired um, that we ended up basically coming in the door and going to bed. And I got up, well, I don't know, about three hours later, but my husband only just got up. So he's going to be awake all night. Pretty sure. a tiny little bit that's a that's exactly what I was talking about but I'm not going to worry about it but there is there is one little dot see what I was talking about here there's one little dot of pow embossing powder that got away and so once it melts onto your paper there's not a darn thing you can do about it so I'm going to leave that for now I'm not going to beat myself up over it but once it's melted, it's melted because embossing powder is simply little teeny, teeny, teeny granules of plastic. And so once you've powdered them onto your card and then you hit them with a heat tool, they melt and they melt onto the card. All right, so let's look for the right size of layering circle. And I think, I think, I don't know whether I want to do white behind or, or well, the, the, the circle itself is white, but do I want to do, hmm, let's see. I want to do it two layers, I know that much. So let's see what, oh, those are hard to get off. Let's see what that looks like. That's pretty good. I think that's a pretty good size. I do like them to be a little bit tight, right? So then the next circle around that would be this one. I think or that's too big yeah I don't like that that's too big so we're gonna do the, the white one in this and we'll cut ourselves a black one in that and we'll see what it looks like you know like everything else I'm gonna see what it looks like and if I like it great if I don't maybe I'll do it a bit bigger but let's just look here so we need some washi tape for this Yes, embellishment, exactly. It may even get cut off in this circle, I don't know. But in any event, it's not very big. So. Okay, let's give this a chop. That's usually my go-to when I, when I muck something up, is find a way to get an embellishment in there. It works really well. Be surprised the things you can hide under an embellishment. Okay, there's our first bit. Just missed chopping it off. Just barely missed chopping it off. But if I'd have put the die any lower, it would have looked odd. It wouldn't have been centered enough anymore. Okay, so let's just cut this off and put the remainder in my scrap bin. All right, now let's do a, I think, black one. Let's do a black one. I had some, oh, there it is. I knew I had some bits of black out here. And the black one, we don't have to washi tape because it doesn't need to be centered or anything. Let's just drop that down. And see how these two blend together. And then, let's get this out of the way. they look yeah see 
you just get barely a little layer around it and it looks quite nice okay so i'm trying to decide in the stamp set there's a little tiny stamp here there's just some little dots like the teeniest te let's just look at them i'm wondering if i want to put some of these teeny 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 dots um, on this sentiment circle we'll just see what they look like Sometimes when it's a teeny, teeny stamp like that, I have a hard time stamping it without getting... It is cute. It is cute. I don't know if you can see that. Um, it's just a, a cute little... I'll do it. Look right here. It's just a cute little three tiny circles, which might look cute on here. I think I will. What the heck? Yeah, that's cute. Just sort of like giving it a little, you know, zhuzh it up a little bit. Give it a little bit more character. Yeah, I like that. A little extra extra something something right yeah I think that's cute polka dots little polka dot guy all right so I guess what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue that a little bit on because we'll pop up we'll pop up the the whole piece but I'm gonna glue this on My glue bottle is not happy today. What's going on? Where's my pin? Here it is. There it is. Let's see if that works. Any better? Yeah, much better. of the glue is once I've got this down here there's a little room for movement right so I can make sure that it's perfectly centered within that black scalloped circle all right I quite like that in keeping with dotty things right so now I think what I want to do here is well, let's put these on. We can put these on now. So let's put these on and sort of like, let's have a look. I want to do um, something else. I want to try something else. Let's just try something else. I want to try this. Just a little idea I had. This is just a little, a little bit of black cardstock that I've cut at a half an inch. Not done yet, so not done yet. Do I, want, do I want that in black or do I want that in red? Maybe I want it in red. Maybe I want it in red. Let's do that again because I have a plan in my brain. I have a plan in my little brain here. I'm gonna do it slightly more than a half an inch actually. Not quite, not quite three quarters, but like a half an inch and, and two notches. This is scaring me a little bit because I'm not quite sure what I'm, I have a plan. have a plan but so far it's just in my head yeah I think the red stripe is good and 
I love it when I mark something and I can't see my mark for life. Oh, here we go. Can't see the, oh, no, I can't see the mark. I'm going to have to do it with the scissors. I can't see the mark I made at all. Fingers crossed that that's straight, okay? All right, so let's put our, let's put our bugs on. Our little ladybugs. I'm just going to use two, like so. Boom, boom. Like that. And let's see where this is going to be. I want to try something before I commit to that red band because I think it shouldn't be red. I do. I think it should be the, the black. So I'm going to take off like a half an inch ish off of that. I think the red is a little too much. It might not be once you see what I'm what my plan is, but I'm gonna I'm gonna take the safe route. Oh, not quite enough. All right, I'll just cut it off. Is that even the same all the way along? Why does it look like it's not? It's a half, and it's a half. So it is okay. It looked like it was wider at one end to me. All right, so this is going to get glued down. I'm feeling more secure about the black one than the red one, so that's kind of my answer, isn't it? And now we're going to get some of this great ribbon. And we'll need a glue dot. All right, so for this, I'm going to decide where I want my bow to actually be. I guess I cut off a lot more ribbon than I needed, silly girl. But that's okay. It won't get wasted. I'm going to decide where I want my where I want my bow to be. So I'm going to put a glue dot there, and I'll show you why I do that. It just makes life easier uh, for me. So let's have our bow be right about right about there, I guess. And you'll find that if you put a glue dot there and then tie your first tie of your bow first bit of your bow you can stick it down to the glue dot okay and then it just makes it easier see that I'll just push it down on there and it will stay there so look at how easy it would be for me to make my bow now that I've done that I sure did cut myself more ribbon than I did, but it's okay because, you know, I never, I don't waste ribbon. I never waste any ribbon, so it, it'll get used. There we are. There, that was my plan, and I still think it looks better on the black. I don't know, it may have looked great on the red, but I like it on the black, so I'm going to... Get my uh, my little sentiment here. I'm going to put three dimensionals on here, just sort of to give it a nice secure finish. I 
And I'm gonna actually put this on an angle. I'm not gonna put it straight. I think it looks better on an angle, okay? So there, now let's take this whole card front and I think we'll pop that up too, because why not? Why not? So with my dimensionals, I always start off in the four corners. And then depending on what, what I'm doing, depending on how much is on it, I'm then gonna put the two sides ends it just depends on how much is on the card front if it's very light then I don't put I don't put this many and then also one in the middle always one in the middle so we have no soggy middles right no saggy middles there we go Cute. Do you like it? That's really cute. And so you've got the benefit of having a white card, but because you've cut the red the same size as the white, it's almost as if you, you've used a red, uh, a red card base. But sometimes I like to use the white. You got your little bow there. So now we need some the bling. And the obvious one to me is going to be the matte black dots, right? That's pretty much the, the way to go with these. I'm thinking. Let's see. Let's see. Where should we put them? Let's have one. Let's have one here. I'm just using the bigger ones. I like the bigger ones. Maybe one there. And the third one. about right there there we go so if we wanted to let's see what we've got here what could we do inside we could do something inside just something little we have these um, cute little flowers but I think if I were going to do these little flowers I would strictly do them in black just just um, just do that in black and um, what else do we have that's kind of it. Unless we wanted to put this little, we let's put this little ladybug in there. What the heck, right? Let's put him in there because he is kind of cute. But we're just going to do him in black, just because I don't like to do too much color inside my cards. Um, so we'll we'll do that guy in black. Let me get my memento. And a block that he'll fit on. Okay, he's pretty cute. But I gotta see what he's gonna look like first. I'm not sure what he's gonna look like. I like him. Okay, let's let's just look at this for a second. We have a couple of minutes left. I like him, but he really needs the stamparatus because he's uh, he needs to be stamped twice. So I can still do that. So I've got my card in this way in my Stamparatus. I need to clean this off a little bit. Otherwise, when I lay it down on my Stamparatus, it's going to drop ink where I don't want it. Okay, so clean it off and we'll dry it. And we'll just pop him where we want him. Let's put him down here on the bottom. I think right about there is pretty good. Do you know what I need? I love it when I think of these things after the fact and then just make life difficult for myself. What I need though is something to hold this down because this card really wants to flip up. 
I think that'll do it. All right, so let's give it some memento. Tell me I have this right side up. I do, right? I have it right side up. I do. And we'll stamp him. Give him a press. Oh, he's cute, but let's give him another stamp. What the heck, right? Make him nice and crisp. He's a cute little guy. There we go. How's that? quite pleased with him. He's very, very cute. Okay, so we got our shiny sentiment. We got our shiny bug wings. And no one's even going to notice that little black dot that I have on there. We've used our lovely gingham ribbon, and we have a cute little surprise inside. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. You used your magnets today? Yeah, they are the bomb. I'll tell you what, it's, it's just too easy for things to move, even when you think they're not going to. So, and that's my feelings on washi tape too. I might be able to get it through there without it moving, but I'm not taking the chance, so I use washi tape. Um, unless I'm using the big one now, because that magnetic cutting plate is the bomb. So, um, so I hope you enjoyed that. Um, tomorrow, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, tomorrow, I need to sort of do a turnaround of the trailer and get things. I need to do a load of laundry, because I'm pretty much taking the same clothes with me that I took this time. Um, and so I just need to do a few things, but we'll see how the day goes. Um, and I will, at some point, I will post, oh, uh, let's just say, I'll post if I'm going to be on, but if I'm not, you won't hear from me, okay? That way I'm not posting unnecessarily and annoying people. <laughs> oh, I just about left my ladybug there. All right, so thank you very much for joining me. I will post this card shortly, and the video will be posted at Stampin' Up, uh, Stampin' with Casey on on YouTube and the card will be up on um, the card and video will be up on Facebook and the card will be up on um, Instagram listing all the supplies that you need to make this card so I hope you enjoyed that I sure, certainly enjoyed my time with you and I will see you next time bye for now